<coughs> a man came to Harun al-Rashid, the Khalifa and the king of his era. And he said to him, you know what, I'm going to say some harsh words to you. Some <coughs> harsh words to you. Right, so you better you better be ready for these harsh words. He said, you're going to say harsh words, get out. You say harsh words to me, get This is the king telling the one. He said, wallahi, for indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent, sent the best of the creation to the worst of the creation. Who? Allah sent Musa alayhi salam, who was the best of his, of his era and the best of his time. To the what? To the worst of creation, who was what? Fir'aun. And he said to him, do not say except a word of gentleness. Speak to him a gentle word. To what? From the best of, from the best of mankind to the worst of mankind. So how are you going to come to me and telling me, Harun al-Rashid? See, some of those rulers have more ilm than these ignorant people. I'm going to speak to you harsh. He said, all right, you're going to speak to me harsh. Did Musa speak to Fir'aun harsh? Well, I'm Fir'aun and you're Musa. You're not Fir'aun. I'm not Fir'aun and you're not Musa. So the way to deal with the rulers, look what the Prophet Sallallahu said. That the greatest mujahid in the sight of Allah is who? Hamza. Greatest mujahid yawm al is Hamza bin Abdul Muttalib. He said, and then the one who stood in front of the Muslim ruler spoke of, in tyrannical Muslim ruler, spoke a word of truth for which he was executed. Mujahid! What do you want to hide in caves for? Uh, go, go and speak. Go to the ruler, stand in front. If he kills you, how do you you can claim that, you know, I fulfilled the hadith? You want to hide in caves and get hundreds of thousands of people in that nation killed? Rather than going and standing up in front of the oppressors as you claim they are? So you would, you would wipe out nearly a whole nation Women, children, everyone, when these kuffar, they came and they carpet bombed the countries. You would rather risk them being wiped out without and not face the courage of standing in front of them and saying, you know what, I'm going to speak the word of truth in front of you. And inshallah, I'll come under that hadith. No, you want to hide in caves while women and children get killed. This is the reality of these individuals. Helm ya ikhwan, knowledge. Knowledge is the, is the thing that distinguishes the people of truth from the people of falsehood. So be a person who takes a part so, so, so be a person who takes a part of knowledge and rectification based upon knowledge. And this is our way. The final and fourth principle is that this knowledge must be taken from the manhaj of the Salaf al-Salih, from the methodology of that group of individuals who we call the Salaf al-Salih. The Salaf al-Salih in the Arabic language means the righteous predecessors. Here, the righteous predecessors referring to the companions of Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That, that without exception they are the companions and then those who come after them then those who come after them in accordance to the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that the best of mankind is my generation then those who come after them then those who come after them our knowledge is based upon their understanding the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said this himself in the hadith that 73 and the hellfire one is saved who are they? ma'ana alayhi yawma ashabi that which I and my companions are upon so the knowledge is to be understood in the light of not what you think this verse in the Quran means, not what you think this hadith means, but rather with the understanding of the companions. Like when, when the people came to Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu, the great companion, and they said to Anas, Hajjaj is killing, Hajjaj is looting, the same Hajjaj ibn Yusuf who killed the, the companion of the Allah ibn Zubair. They said, look what he's doing. He said, I narrate to you the statement of the Prophet sallallahu Be patient. Be patient up until you meet me at the hole. Be patient up until you meet me at the lake. The lake, Yom al Qiyamah, on the day of resurrection, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will set up a, a lake for the Messenger of Allah and you will meet him there. If you are people of truth and people of Sunnah, if you oppose that and you oppose the Sunnah, then the angels will push you away from the lake of the Prophet, وسلم, as he alayhi salatu was salam mentioned. So there is no safety in any methodology except for that which the Jama'ah were upon. The jama'ah, the main body, referring to the companions. And that is the path of the believers, as Allah has mentioned. Where Allah mentioned, whomsoever contradicts or opposes the Messenger of Allah after the clear guidance has been conveyed to him, then Allah will lead him in the path, that, and then he chooses the path, other than the path of the companions, then Allah will lead him in the path that he has chosen and burn him in the hellfire and what an evil destination here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse in Surah An-Nisa ayah 115 that whomsoever contradicts the messenger and then he opposes the path of the believers and that is none other 
than the part of the companions. Because when the verse was revealed, who were the believers? Khawarij, Osama bin Laden, Abu Qatada. Huh? Are these, were these the believers in that time? No. The believers were the companions. Whoever opposes their part. Not opposes the part of these, of these radicals in our times. No. Whoever opposes their part. The part of the companions. Then Allah will leave him in the path that he has chosen. And burn him in the hellfire. For what? For opposing the path of the companions. Likewise, the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَالسَّابِقُونَ الْأَوَّلُ مِنَ الْمُحَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنْسَارِ وَالَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوهُمْ بِإِحْسَانِ رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عنه. Where Allah mentions the first and foremost to embrace Islam from the Muhajirin, companions of Mecca, and the Ansar, the companions of Medina. And then those who follow them in goodness, then Allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with Him. So they are the ones to be followed because whoever follows them in goodness, as Allah mentioned in that verse in Surah Tawbah, Ayah 100, whoever follows them in goodness, Allah is pleased with them and will enter them into the gardens of paradise to remain therein. So we find. In conclusion, that we should stick to that path, the path of those believers, so that he does not traverse the path of the people of separation, the people of different from the sects that oppose that which the Messenger of Allah and his companions were upon. So these are the principles that will bring about rectification. These four principles, if one adheres to them staunchly and properly with knowledge, they will bring about rectification of the whole of mankind, beginning with yourselves. So, those, so these are the principles. And whosoever opposes it, and opposes these principles and claims that rectification will occur without the establishment of these principles, then no doubt he is from those who are corrupted. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned, وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ لَا تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ قَالُوا إِنَّمَا نَحْنُ مُصْلِحُونَ So when it is said to them, do not cause corruption in the earth, what do they say? We are rectifying. We are rectifying. Then Allah mentions, أَلَا إِنَّهُمْ هُمُ الْمُفْسِدُونَ وَلَكِنْ لَا يَشْعُرُونَ but rather they are the ones who are the mufsidun, they are the ones who are the corrupted ones, but they do not perceive that. So it is not just a claim, we want to rectify, we want to march in the streets of London, we want to do this, we want to boycott this country and that country and all of this stuff, ya ikhwan. If it is not established in the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, then it will not bring about rectification. It will not bring about rectification. So therefore we conclude upon that and we finish upon that point and I hope that that has brought some sort of clarification to the, to the position of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, the position of the people of Sunnah, and those who follow the Jama'ah, the companions, with regard to how rectification is to be brought about in the times that we live in. Yeah. So we'll enter straight into the questions and answers. I'll apologize for if my answers are sometimes brief. I'll, for the important ones, I'll go into some detail, but for the others, I will be brief, inshallah. What is your response? <coughs> to when sisters and brothers say that the Salafi manhaj is not correct because they don't believe that jihad is obligatory in our time. How do you refute them? I do not know any Salafi who said this. I don't know any Salafi who said this. Not Salafi Alim, no Salafi Talib al -Ilm. You may have met someone who sells chicken and chips at the local restaurant and he's told you we don't believe in jihad. I don't know any Salafi who says that jihad cannot, is not obligatory. Jihad is fad kifaya. Of jihad, it is a universal obligation. If a group of the ummah carry it out, then it is the, 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 it is lifted from the rest of the ummah. It can become fard ayn or individual obligation upon every capable male to begin with in certain circumstances, i.e., when the Muslim ruler calls you out. So, therefore, this statement doesn't make any sense to me because there are no Salafi ulama that say that jihad is not obligatory in our time. Salafi ulama do say that. But location, time, place, what type of jihad? Is it offensive? There's no offensive jihad in our time. There's no difference on that amongst the ulama. And no difference even in the, in, in the fiqh of the issue. Jihad of, of conquering requires a Muslim ruler with a Muslim army. You join that Muslim army or you are recruited into that Muslim army that has a government. Just like most governments <coughs> have armies, you are recruited into that. You make jihad. That's jihad. Jihad of conquering. The jihad of defense, defensive jihad when the non-Muslims enter into your land and they take that which belongs to you and they take your property, or they try to kill you, or they try to come into your home, it's just permissible to fight them. And that jihad does not even require this only against non-Muslims, because even if the insurgents and the khawari, or anyone comes into your house and does this to you, you can fight them back, or your property, or your land. You can fight them, and that is jihad in the path of Allah. And that is present, and it is something that is ongoing, and it will not, Allahu A'lam, come to an end up until, you know, the, the, the Muslims are in a state of security. <coughs>